if you need to be really efficient with storage. It's like cramming them in there. Yeah. All right. So it sounds like BCD might be really handy for, you know, things like financial calculations. Absolutely. Yeah. Anywhere where you need to avoid even tiny rounding errors. Right. Because those can add up quickly. Yeah. It's a big deal in finance. Now, we've talked about whole numbers, right. but what about numbers with the decimal point? That's where we get into floating points. Okay, yeah. So how do computers deal with those? So floating point is how computers represent numbers that aren't whole, or at least very close approximations of them. Okay. And the source points out it's closely related to scientific notation. Okay, I remember that from, you know, like high school science classes and stuff. Exactly. You have the significant part of the number, an exponent that tells you the power of 10, or in binary, the power of 2 to multiply by, and a sign to say if it's positive and negative. Makes sense. And they even give an example of converting the decimal number 78.375 into the IEE single precision floating point format, which is 32 bits long. Yeah, they don't get too deep into the conversion. It can get pretty complicated. But, but it illustrates that these decimal numbers with fractions, you know, they get translated into a specific binary format. Okay. And what's really important to understand is that it's tricky to represent these real numbers with a finite number of bits. Right, because you can have these infinite decimals and stuff. Exactly. 